Hey everyone, so in last lecture I talked about PMS, probability mass function and probability uh, cumulative distribution function and I took some example as well. But then one student, I'm not one, two, three student requested that can I take a general example and then while thinking on that I thought I should mention some formulas as well which I didn't mention in earlier lecture. Okay, so before stating those formulas, let me take this one nice example and then we will try to generalize this. Okay, whatever we are going to do in this example. So what is a random variable? You have to take minimum of two numbers that appear when a pair of fair dice is thrown once. So you have two fair dice, you are just throwing it once. You have to count the minimum of two numbers. Okay, so when you throw a, throw a die, if it comes one and four, what is the minimum one? When you put five, when outcome is five, six, what is the minimum five? Okay, so that's what your random variable is. So what are the possible outcomes? What are the possible outcomes? So what is your x? It is minimum of a comma b. What is your a? A can be anything from 1 to 6. B can be anything from 1 to 6. So what will be the sample space? Sample space will be 1 comma 1, 1 comma 2 up to 6 comma 6. Okay, so the total number of elements in the sample space will be 36. And what will be the values? Your random variable will take the range set of x. Minimum can either be 1 or it will be 2 or up to it will be 6. Minimum can any one of this. Okay. Now let us find first PMF and CDF. Okay. So PMF that means small f. I want to find f of 0. That means what? What is the probability? Or let's go the other way. First let's take the simple one. 6. Let us find f of 6. What is the probability that the random variable x will take the value 6? That means what is the probability that the minimum value will be 6. Now when minimum will be 6? When both the die will get 6 as an outcome, that means 6 comma 6. When you have 6 comma 6, only in that scenario, the minimum will be 6. Okay, so 6 comma 6. What is the probability of choosing getting 6 comma 6 out of all 36? It is 1 by 36. Right? Let me go for another. What is probability of 5? That means probability that the random variable will take the value 5. That means minimum will be 5. So when will you get 5? 5 comma 5 or 6 comma 5 or 5 comma 6 then only the minimum will be 5 right so it will be 3 by 36 when will you get 4 when the outcome is 4 4 5 4 4 5 4 6 6 4 right in that case the minimum will be 4 so here you will have 5 by 36 when the minimum will be 3 so you have 3 comma 3 or 3 comma 4 4 comma 3 5 comma 3 3 comma 5 6 comma 3 all this will give you 7 by 36 when will be this 2? When will you get 2 as an output? So when you have 2 comma 2 or 2 comma 3, 3 comma 2, 4 comma 2, when you count all that you get 9. So 9 by 36. And when will you get 1? In all the cases, right? So you will have 11 by 36. 1 comma 1, 1 comma 2, 2 comma 1, 3 comma 1, 1 comma 3, 4 comma 1, 4, what, 4 comma 1, 6 comma 1, 1 comma 6. You have this. So this is your probabilities. Now, so this we have found the PMF, probability mass function. Okay, now the next thing is once I have this, one can ask what is f of 1? So what is my f of x? Cumulative distribution function. It is summation of f of t for t less equal x. Okay, so what will be my f of 1? It will be same as f of 1. What will be f of 2? It will be f of 1 plus f of 2, which is 20 by 36. Right? What will be f of 3? Capital F of 3. It will be addition of all these 3, which is 27 by 36. What will be f capital F of 4? Addition of this 4 and this 5 and this 6. So that is my PMF and CDF. Okay. Now, once we have this, okay, I should keep this in mind. 1, 3, 5, 7, 9, 11. Okay, keep this in mind. Now, what is the probability that x will take the value less equal 4? But this is nothing but your capital F of 4. Which is nothing but small f of 1 plus f of 2 plus f of 3 plus f of 4. Now, what is the probability that random variable will take the value between 1 and 4? So, in that case, you will have f of 1 plus f of 2 plus f of 3 plus f of 4. Which is same as this. Because we are not having 0 as a value. So, these two things are same. Okay. If I ask you what is probability 1 strictly less than x less equal 4. 
सो इन दैट केस इट विल स्टार्ट फ्रॉम एफ ऑफ टू एफ ऑफ टू प्लस एफ ऑफ थ्री प्लस एफ ऑफ फोर ओके एंड इफ यू हैव दिस लेस इक्वल एंड हियर यू हैव स्ट्रिक्टली लेस देन देन दिस इज एफ ऑफ वन प्लस एफ ऑफ टू प्लस एफ ऑफ थ्री यू विल नॉट टेक फोर ओके सो इफ यू रिमूव द इक्वेलिटी साइन योर प्रोबेबिलिटी विल चेंज वी विल सी इन नेक्स्ट सेशन इन कंटिन्यूस रैंडम वेरिएबल this does not matter when you are in a continuous case whether you have equality or you have a strict inequality it does not affect the answer but for the discrete case it do affect the answer if the output is non zero okay so keep that point in mind okay so now i hope this is clear so now in general i will draw the table after some time but now since we are doing this in general you may see such kind of formulas what is probability that the random variable is taking value from xm to xn what will be this probability that x is taking the value xm plus probability another notation it is taking the value xm plus 1 plus probability that the random variable is taking the value xn so this is in general the formula if you have strictly less than over here then this term won't be there it will start from here If here also you have strict inequality, then here we'll go till x n minus one. Okay, what is probability that your x is greater than x n? So we have the formula for less equal. So in this case, suppose if you have till x four, if this is the question, x is taking the value greater than x four, greater than four. Now here you had only finite outcomes, the range set one, two, three, four, five, six. So this is nothing but f of five plus f of six. but many times it may be difficult to go very far when you have plenty of values in that case this is nothing but 1 minus probability x is taking the value less equal 4 and this is nothing but 1 minus capital f of 4 so if you know capital f of 4 directly you can use this sometimes people give you the table of cdf instead of pmf so in that case you directly know the f of 4 put up the value you get this as an answer so it all depends on what data is given to you whether the pmf is given cdf is given even if the P P pmf is given you can easily find f of 4 by adding it adding it up okay if probability of x greater equal 4 that means this is 1 minus probability x strictly less than 4 that means what 1 minus probability x is less equal 3 because the previous one will be 3 and this is nothing but 1 minus f of 3 so this is how you can solve such kind of problems okay so when you are having a discrete case always make sure you look after equality or the strict inequality okay so that was few things now at the end now when you want to draw the figures we have seen in the earlier lecture that the first is the distribution tables that one can write x and say small f of x and capital f of x right so what is the range set 1 2 3 4 5 6 what was this it was 11 by 36 9 by 36 i think 7 by 36 5 by 36 3 by 36 1 by 36 what will be capital f of 1 it will be same what will be this 20 by 36 9 27 36 32 by 36 35 by 36 and 36 by 36 so this is your table from here you can always observe that f of the largest range set what is the whatever the largest value is that will always be one because you are summing it up from here one can see that if this is the question what is limit x going to infinity f of x x is nothing but this values so sometimes people ask this as an objective question what is the answer answer is one because after some stage because as you go towards the largest value it will always take one as the value because you are summing up everything and what is the range of capital f of x it is always between 0 to 1 right it is always maximum value is 1 and it is always greater equal 0 and since it is always greater or equal to 0 if i change this thing minus infinity what is the answer is going towards 0 okay because they are taking the probabilities as the value so they are always from 0 to 1 and this is what we have 
so people get confused people say uh, it's zero over here right so when we are going towards minus infinity what value it will take as i have we have seen in the definition in earlier lecture for the non zero value i mean wherever we have the range set we have the probabilities if something is not here like 7 8 9 and so on minus 1 minus 2 minus 3 so on there we define f of x to be zero and therefore since it is always greater or equal zero as it goes towards minus infinity the least most value is zero so the limit will go towards zero so i hope this is clear if you have any doubt you can ask me in the comment section thank you